You know what I smell? What do you smell? I smell hospital. Uh, that is actually a unique smell. Yeah, it is. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HD1 San Francisco, always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch and YouTube, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. Uh, do you smell what the doc is cooking? That's what you should have said, because it's time for Clear to Play. We're going to take you inside the tent, get you updated on the latest injuries in the Bay. Proud to partner with UCSF Health on this segment and bring in Associate Professor of Orthopedic Surgery, Dr. Narav Pandya. Doc, thank you for being with us. What happens to your phone <laughs> on a night like last night? Can you take our listeners through what happens when a moment goes down like that? You know, it's actually funny. My, my kids um, know when, when my phone starts beeping and all the Twitter noises start, and they're like, yeah, someone got hurt. <laughs> I'm like, oh, geez. I thought it was just like friends reaching out to me. But, yeah, no, there's a lot of questions come out. I always say we don't know what the injury is until the MRI comes out. But it's, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of speculation that goes on, um, you know, from a lot of different folks. But it's, uh, it's always fun to see people interested in medical stuff. I kind of appreciate it. Well, and, and, and what do you think here? The obvious uh, of Achilles means a full year, but at age 39, what does it mean for his career? Yeah, you know, I think that's really the key question. I mean, I think when how you do after an Achilles repair is really based on what does everything around it look like? I mean, we can sew anyone's Achilles together, but if that tissue is already kind of degenerated, it's got years of football on it, Yes, it'll heal together, but what's that going to mean for his function down the road? So I think his age is the biggest determining factor is will he be able to play? Will he be explosive? Will he be able to move around? And we just don't know that. The other thing is there have only been three quarterbacks recently that I think have actually torn their Achilles. I think Dan Marino, Vinny Testaverde, and maybe Trent Dilfer I think was the third one. We just don't have a good sample size for quarterbacks. So um, it may be very difficult. I, I know it's going to be hard to say whether he'll be back. He'll obviously have the possibility to be back, but will he be effective? And Will he want to come back, uh, you know, take that risk playing on that MetLife turf? Does the position he plays help him more than if he was an edge rusher or a wide receiver in terms of being able to return? Yeah, absolutely. You know, if you're going to choose, you know, a position that probably has the highest likelihood of returning, putting age aside, it's probably going to be quarterback. Um, obviously, for ru- running backs and wide receivers and defensive backs, their return to plate rate is significantly lower than someone who tears it who's on the line. And I think quarterback is probably the safest position because you're just not doing – as much kind of explosive activity, particularly the way he plays. So that's the one thing that is working in his favor. He's kind of more of a drop-back quarterback. He's not very mobile. Um, That does work in his favor for coming back to play. Um, Doc, I'm sure everyone would love to hear your thoughts, uh, just in a general sense, on the turf conversation that that, that is now developing. How would you put into words turf versus grass? Yeah, and I, it, actually, you know, we'll never know if the turf played a role in, in Aaron Rodgers' injury. I mean, he had a you know, large person kind of coming down on him. But in general, when you look at the studies, artificial turf has an increased injury risk, no matter what sport you're looking at, particularly lower extremity injury risk. So I think, in general, I understand there's increased cost for grass, and that's why a lot of owners, you know, don't want to incorporate it. But when you have an injury to someone like Aaron Rodgers, if it is related to turf, you keep losing these star players to these injuries, the cost of losing them is going to far outweigh getting grass on the field. So I think NFL players know you say it because they know what it feels like and the data backs it up. And I think turf definitely is associated with that injury risk. And the NFL has to really take a hard look at and looking at, you know, yes, it's more expensive on the front end, but on the back end, if you're losing your stars, it's, it's going to be a big deal. Yeah. And unfortunately they've shown no inclination toward protecting players when it comes to injury. So I, I wouldn't hold my breath in terms of them making this adjustment after another terrible artificial turf injury well from an injury to a rehab and a comeback brock purdy how did you think brock looked in his first real live action game on sunday uh he looked phenomenal i mean i think you know we have a tendency to forget we went from is he going to play to suddenly he's playing six months to the date after his surgery it looks phenomenal i didn't see any issues in terms of like arm strength he took several hits which i think was the, the big unknown was we know pretty predictably you're going to be able to throw after this. Maybe there'll be some issues in terms of, you know, getting strength back initially, but we just don't have data in terms of how athletes do when they get hit repetitively. He got hit. He was still throwing. Didn't seem like he had any issues after the game. Um, so moving forward, barring there being some sort of weird fatigue issue or some sort of weird hit, I think we can put this UCL repair behind us, and it's just Brock Purdy playing well, and we don't have to think about how he's responding to this injury. Amazing. Uh, Doc Pandy, a clear to play with us here on Willard and Dibs, 95-7 the game. Okay, Doc, what about Bosa? Uh, him getting through that game the way he did, is it now just officially all systems go? I think so, yeah. I mean, I think if you're going to see where that biggest first injury risk is going to occur, 
it's going to be in the first game back after not doing a lot of explosive activity. So you could definitely see he didn't look like the, the usual Nick Bosa that we see out there. There was definitely some rust. But the fact that he made it through without any soft tissue issues, um, he played a decent number of snaps as well, too. I think that's a testament to how much he was staying in shape, um, as well to the training staff who felt comfortable kind of playing him that much. So, yeah, absolutely. I think we're kind of on a more smoother path now. He made it through that big first game, and uh, now it's just a matter of him kind of getting back and getting more reps and getting that sharpness that probably will come just with more playing time. George Kittle was listed as questionable with the groin injury. He ended up playing through it and playing a lot, quite frankly. What did you see from George Kittle in terms of just how close to 100% he looked? He looked pretty good. You know, I think it, when you looked at him, maybe there was a little bit of hesitation, you know, uh, in certain maneuvers, but... Uh, the fact that he was playing a lot is a very good sign because I think with groin injuries, it, once they're healed, the next big phase you have to get through is playing a lot because then things can fatigue. The fact that he played that much and there were any concerns from the training staff and he looked pretty similar from you know the first snap to the end of the game, um, I think that bodes well for an injury that he's had um, you know several times in his career. Uh, Doc, okay, follow me here. I'm going to tell everyone just a quick little story. I'm going to let all my brethren here at 95.7 The Game in our fantasy league know that Puka Nakua plays for my team because I have the number one overall waiver priority, so I will break that news. Puka's going to be on my team tomorrow morning because I am putting in that claim. I bring that up to you, Doc, because I'd like to ask you, is he going to be someone I can use for the next four weeks, or is he going to be much more? What I'm asking you is, Cooper Cup, how's this hamstring thing going to play out for the rest of the year? It definitely is a little bit concerning. I mean, there is so much data and kind of treatment around hamstring injuries in the NFL. The fact that he suddenly, you know, had this nagging issue, then he's going to like various hospitals to get second opinions. Um, it, it's a little bit more troublesome. And, and I think the question with him is, is this a hamstring issue? Or some people bring it up, is it a nerve issue? Because sometimes you can get pain in your hamstring and it's actually the, your sciatic nerve. So I think it's really figuring out what's going on here. Anytime a player is at lower extremity injuries has a recurrent hamstring issue, you get worried about. Then they're throwing around terms like nerve. You get worried about a little bit more. And what makes him great is his explosiveness. So if that hamstring or, or that nerve is an issue, I do worry if this is going to be 8, 9, 10, 11 weeks. So for your fantasy team, it might be good to hold on to him for a while because it may be maybe a little bit of time before we see Cooper Cup back on the field. Ooh, boy. That's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, sorry, I'm just looking at Dibs turned red. Why are you red? Why did you just turn red? Because, and Doc, I hate to do this in front of you because I admire you and your medical knowledge so much, but this whole station is set up so that Mark feels good, and I'm sick of it, Doc. <laughs> Puka Nakua. Puka Nakua. Did I say that right, Grandy? Puka Nakua. I put in a claim See, for Puka Nakua. You ain't going to get him. Oh, you get the number one waiver because you picked last. Yeah, it's a I joke. Yeah, last pick. Doc, yeah. thank you so much for joining Thanks, us. And Doc. I apologize for the unpleasantness <laughs> that's about to take place. It, you know, next week I'll just bring Mark down if you need me to. You know? yeah. yeah, Doc. There you yeah. go. Hey, yeah, Doc, there's something on my left foot. Feels a little funny, oh, like God. there's a little burning sensation. It's a what's, corn. What's going on there? <laughs> But you know, might be might be a little corn, a little bunion. You never know, Mark. Oh. Need time for some new shoes. You know? uh, no, actually, I did. <laughs> I am wearing some old shoes right now. A great, Doc. good call. Thank you, Doc. Appreciate you. No problem. Take care, guys. All right. Proceeding was sponsored by UCF uh, UCSF Health. Say it with Don't me. Don't butcher the it's, tag. It's fun to say. Puka Nakua.